Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about BritBox and just what the hell is going on? So I'm sure many of you are aware of the streaming service BritBox. It's sort of a one-stop shop for a lot of British content, as the name implies. Primarily from shows made by the BBC and ITV, but there's also stuff from, say, Channel 4, Channel 5 as well. It was created by both the BBC and ITV, a rare joint venture from the two. I guess to sort of dip their toes into that streaming world, because at that point, the BBC had its iPlayer, but that was very much just a native video on demand service. It wasn't in the same sort of category or league as like a Netflix, for example. ITV was still a few years off of ITVX. So this was sort of their ideas to dip their toes in, see what they could do. Now, it's actually been around for maybe a bit longer than you might have thought. It launched in the United States in early 2017 and then eventually made its way over here to the UK a couple of years later. So why is it back in the news again? Well, it was recently announced that parts of BritBox were sold off, some to the BBC, some to ITV, but it does beg the question, where's it going to be in the near future? So we have an article from the ever-reliable RxTV. You should guys should always go check them out. They do tons of articles that I don't even talk about here on this channel. So if you're into the media, television world, you should definitely check out their stuff. But the question is, BritBox International is sold to the BBC. So what is next for BritBox? ITV has sold its 50% share in BritBox International to its joint venture partner, BBC Studios, in a £255 million transaction. The international streaming service first debuted in North America before being rolled out in various other territories around the world, including the UK. So let's be clear on that one. What ITV have sold there to the BBC is their stake in BritBox International. That is the service that operates outside of the UK in territories such as the United States, the service that's been going on for a few years longer than the UK one. And that's a pretty hefty price tag, £255 million BBC Studios had to pay. BBC Studios is the commercial side of the Beeb. You know, it's their commercial operations. It draws in a lot of revenue for them outside of the license fee. BritBox UK was launched under a different ownership structure with the BBC only having a 10% share before ITV took full control of the UK service in 2022. ITV then incorporated BritBox UK into ITVX Premium. So that's the key difference, it seems, at the minute, that the international version is being fully operated by BBC Studios and the UK version is solely being operated now by ITV. But ITV had that majority stake or that majority ownership right from the very beginning. ITV has sold its stake in BritBox International as it wants to focus on its three core pillars of ITVX, ITV Studios, and its broadcast channels such as ITV One. The announcement comes ahead of the publication of full financial results next week. Well, they'll be interesting to read when those drop, but I sort of understand that. We talked a bit about the recent ITV corporate rebrand that's happened, and they're very much focusing on those three pillars, as they say, ITVX, ITV Studios, like the production arm, and the broadcast channels as well. So I guess having a, an ownership or a 50% stake in an international service doesn't really serve what they're going for as a brand right now. I guess that's what they're getting at. BritBox International contained a range of ITV programs, even making some of its daytime shows available to US audiences. ITV will continue to license programs to BritBox International. So ITV is still going to sort of work with BBC Studios, I guess, to provide some of their content for those international audiences. And I have to say, BritBox International, I thought, always made more sense than the UK version. Because if you think about it, for those outside of the UK, to watch content uh, from here is exceedingly difficult to do without, say, use of a VPN or an alternative means such as that. So having BritBox, yes, it's a paid subscription service, but having an official means to watch tons of British programming, a lot of it classic programming from decades gone by, that's a great alternative for those viewers. So what happens to BritBox International? It's now 100% owned by BBC Studios, which includes the former BBC Worldwide business that was tasked at making money by selling BBC content abroad, which very much is happening, I guess, with the BritBox formula there. BritBox International has 3.75 million subscribers in the eight countries it operates in. It's still a relative minnow amongst streamers. Netflix has over 200 million subscribers. Okay, well, when you compare it with something like Netflix, of course, BritBox is going to be in the minority. But, you know, it's got a... It's got a couple million there. I'm sure they want to consistently bump that up, but that's always been the challenge at a time. Even back in 2017 when it launched, there were several streaming options available. And with many households trying to, you know, mainly go for like one at two at max, it's competing with a lot. 
BritBox operates in the USA, Canada, Australia, South Africa, Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden. Quite a range of countries there. So USA, Canada, that makes sense. We've always had good links selling our content there. Same with Australia. A lot of British content has done really well there too. The Scandinavian countries are an interesting one, like Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden. It seems like they enjoy their British content as well, as do South Africa. Although I guess the, um, the Nor Norway makes sense with BBC Nordic dropping last year as well. So for subscribers to BritBox International, this is just the international service, your service will continue to feature a range of programs, not just from the BBC, but also from other UK broadcasters such as ITV and Channel 4. This is similar to existing arrangements that cover linear TV channels. For example, BBC channels operate abroad, include individual programs that are shown on non-BBC channels in the UK. So it, in terms of that arrangement, as it says, there's not going to be too vast a difference. BritBox International will buy in the rights for content in each area it operates in through licensing agreements through various broadcasters. However, the move does pave the way for the BBC to eventually align the BritBox brand to the main BBC brand in the future. The BBC isn't, however, yet talking about a global version of the iPlayer, though. That's what I guess, you know, in a world, again, where you're talking about brands and like recognition and stuff. Of course, the BBC brand, the British Broadcasting Corporation brand, is so much more widely known by people around the world than the phrase BritBox. And, you know, you could take that even more globally, I think. So what they're saying is BritBox, the name of it could eventually disappear, but the, the concept of it and the overall format of it could be carried over into something like a global version of what the iPlayer is or a global version of a BBC branded streaming service. I think ultimately down the line, just again with how competition's going and the way streaming's going, that probably would be beneficial to the BBC. But if they're not talking about it yet, it makes you think, well, if not now, when? Then in regards to BritBox UK, so just the UK service, it's been under 100% control of ITV since March of 2022. Since then, it's become part of ITVX Premium. That's right. So if you pay the premium price for ITVX Premium, which I believe was always the same as a BritBox subscription, you get access to BritBox and all of the content it harbors there, including stuff not just from ITV, but from the BBC, Channel 4 and Channel 5. ITV has stopped creating original content for BritBox, e.g. Spitting Image. Instead, BritBox has become a library of older UK television shows. Yeah, I remember when they started that, you know, oh, we're going to make original content because that was the thing, you know, every streaming service has to have its original content. And don't get me wrong, having your own original programs on your streaming service isn't a bad idea at all. In fact, it's a great tool to use to try and get people invested and interested, give it a uh, an exclusive reason. I think right from the get-go when we're rehashing Spitting Image, you know, I think it worked more in its time as opposed to now. And they just didn't really have the budgets to compete as much with all those streaming services like Netflix. For legacy subscribers, the standalone BritBox UK app and website will close next month. All right, so they're actually winding it down. In fact, when you look, they're saying it's going to be around the end of April of 2024. So the actual standalone app and website will no longer function. You will only be able to access BritBox and its content through ITVX Premium. ITVX contains a BritBox branded area that can be accessed on all platforms that support ITVX Premium. So I'm guessing that if you already have a BritBox subscription, just a BritBox one, that will that will basically morph into an ITVX Premium one. So if you've got that, that's great because not only then are you getting the BritBox stuff you already had, you're getting access to all of the bonus content from ITVX and, of course, free of adverts. But what does it mean for subscribers? So BritBox on ITVX Premium continues to offer a range of classic TV content, including older programs from the BBC. This is similar to existing arrangements with linear TV channels that license all the BBC content to be shown on their channels, so again, similar to the international one. An ITVX Premium subscription is the same price as a standalone BritBox UK subscription, but it also includes access to ad-free content from the rest of ITVX, content from Studio Canal Presents, and hundreds of other shows not available on the free version of ITVX. I didn't know it was in the hundreds. That is quite a lot of content they're keeping behind that paywall. Just clicking on that link, you get taken to the ITVX help page here, which asks the question, is all of BritBox included with ITVX Premium? And the answer is yes. Uh, Premium has exactly the same catalogue of shows and films that were previously on BritBox app and website. It includes all the BBC, Channel 4 and Channel 5 content and the ITV stuff as well. So included with the premium subscription, this is, I guess, to bolster those who just have a BritBox one to jump over, you get the entire BritBox catalogue, 
hundreds more hit films, shows, and live events with ITVX Premium, iconic films and series from Studio Canal Presents, stream ad-free, download on the go, and cancel any time. What a premium feature! So, in a way, this integration into ITVX actually makes more sense. I know there'll be some people there who just want access to BritBox, but really, if you're getting access to BritBox and then even like hundreds more shows that you might not even access, but the options there and ad free as well. I'd argue, yeah, that is probably more value at the same price. You're getting more content for the same price than you would do from BritBox alone. So integrating it into ITVX and closing it down as its own individual thing here in the UK actually makes a lot of sense, both to them and the consumer when you think about it. However, the latest developments does pave the way for the BritBox brand to eventually disappear, with programs becoming fully absorbed into ITVX or an ITVX branded subfolder of content. Ah, oh, right. Well, again, this makes sense too, because a lot of the program content on ITVX, as we've stressed, is archive content, stuff from decades ago. They could very easily be put into like a new subfolder within ITVX. So, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even not just by decade, you could go by genre, like 60s drama, 60s soaps, you know, 60s comedy, stuff like that. Really, I guess this integration into ITVX, whilst it makes sense now while they're doing this transition period, while they're winding the BritBox UK app down, Getting rid of the name, the brand eventually in the UK probably makes sense. I must admit, like I said at the start, BritBox to me always made sense internationally to give this content to audiences who didn't have the easiest access to it. But here in the UK, where a lot of that content, not all of it, but a fair amount of it was available, you know, on ITVX, even the base model, BBC iPlayer, Channel 4 streaming service, you know, a lot, or even on physical media like DVD, Blu-ray, a lot of this stuff is accessible where it isn't overseas. So launching BritBox when they did made little to no sense in my eyes. I know people jumped on it for one reason or another, but I do think this is the right way they're going. And the erosion of the brand here in the UK to eliminate it, again, Sad, sure, but it, it just, it makes more sense. There's currently no talk of losing non-ITV content on BritBox UK in ITVX. The BBC has a long-term agreement with ITV to supply content to BritBox UK. Well, that's reassuring. But that setup is not guaranteed to last forever. Looking at the broadcasters that have helped supply BritBox UK with programs, the BBC is facing a possible switch to at least partial subscription funding by the end of the decade. Channel 4 wants to increase subscribers to Channel 4+. Plus. Meanwhile, Channel 5, under the ownership of Paramount, is seeking to boost its own streaming library this year when My5 combines with Pluto TV. Therefore, broadcasters might want to keep hold more of the programs they own to monetize them on their own streaming platforms. However, that won't stop programs made by third-party independent production companies appearing in other places. This raises a really good point. So, you know, in the next couple of years, at least, or so it implies, if you're a BBC fan and you've got an ITVX premium account, don't worry. They're still going to provide that content over there for a few more years, at least. Same with Channel 4 and Channel 5. But the point raised is once those agreements run out, they think, hmm, are we going to sign a new agreement to give the stuff we own that we produce or whatever to ITV for them to monetize on their platform? Or are we going to keep that for ourselves to monetize for ourselves and make our own money? It's interesting how it mentions that the BBC might go to a partial subscription-based funding by the end of the decade, you know, talking about abolishing the license fee. At the time of recording this, we don't really know that. I'm sure they're still discussing the alternatives because the license fee is going up until January 2027 at the latest. The BBC are going to have to look at more ways of monetizing what they own. Channel 4, again, if they want more people on Channel 4+, Plus, their streaming site, well, then you're going to have to provide those programs and not have them on other sites. I don't think that will cause a problem for ITV because I think by that point, once those agreements run out, you'd think that they would have completely eliminated the BritBox branding. So any classic or legacy content that is on there will just be building those subfolders like by genre, by decade, whatever. It won't be billed as like BritBox content. On the corporate side, this is coming from uh, Carolyn McCall, who is the ITV CEO. And she said, the sale of 50% of BritBox International means ITV is focused on its core strategic goals of continuing to build on ITVX's success and growing ITV studios. I would like to thank the BritBox International team for making the company such a success and particularly CEO Rima Sakan for her leadership, drive and vision. And then we have a comment from Tom Fussell or Fusel from BBC Studios. He's the CEO there. And he said, this is an important acquisition for us. We're taking full ownership of a successful growing service we know well and that fits with our stated ambition to double the size of our business. BritBox International has British content at its heart and it generates and satisfies demand for British shows outside the UK. We will continue to make significant investments in the future to deliver long-term value to the BBC. So where this all stands in the thick of it, starting with the international side, 
the BBC owning the international side, I think is a pretty good move. Because at a time when they're trying to generate revenue, you know, whether that's BBC Studios or the main BBC brand itself, you know, they're making sweeping cuts at the minute, what with the license fee freezes and all that sort of stuff. So to own a paid subscription service that has a couple million already and definitely has that potential to grow even further, not just in the United States, but in other territories around the world, that will hopefully put them in a good place. Because let's not forget, there are millions out there who look at British content, particularly like our dramas and stuff, and they see that as like a very high benchmark of television. And I think that's something we can be proud of and share around the world. So the BritBox platform, the branding, everything overseas, complete sense. In the UK, however, very different story. I think it entered into a market that's well oversaturated, providing a lot of content that is available elsewhere, whether that be on other streaming platforms or on physical media. And ultimately, I think the BBC was smart to give up its limited stake that it had in the UK version. And ITV is also smart for integrating it into the premium version of their streaming service. It does make ITVX premium seem more enticing as a result. And I think winding BritBox on its own down and eventually getting rid of the branding over the next few years, again, probably makes sense for ITVX and its whole strategy in the long run. But I just wanted to talk about the BritBox situation because I've seen many people floating around saying, oh, it's all failing, it's crumbling, it's falling apart. And I wouldn't say that's necessarily the case. Definitely not internationally. Whilst it isn't the biggest thing at all, it definitely has that room to grow and expand over time. But here in the UK, not that it was necessarily like burning and, you know, crashing and burning, but I think what it was on its own seemed a little confused and also at a time where we didn't necessarily need a platform like that. But as I said, integrating it into ITVX makes complete sense. I wish them every luck with it. Hopefully that transition will be smooth once the individual service shuts down at the end of April. But I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about the state of BritBox, both internationally and in the UK as well? Do you think it's in a healthy state? Do you think it's going to survive the end of this decade? Do you think by 2030 in the UK we'll still have the BritBox branding and all that? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on it as well. It really helps us out. Subscribe if you're brand new. The support's been immense recently. Thank you so much for that. Let's keep that going. But in the meantime, I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show. And a special thank you to Macra, Ethan Carberry-Holt, Bruce Danton, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dord Khan, Trev Hughes, AJ Mac 200017, Deck KP20, Simon Harrison, Evan Hart 38, and Jen, our AMTV staff members.